good morning everyone uh, welcome to what day well this is gonna be fridays stay at home art club it's gonna be the second of our portraiture videos um, it's a bright and shining day so i'm sitting in a slightly different bit of my flat hiding from the glare so otherwise this should just be all white 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 um all right yep so today we're going to be looking at how to start a portrait how to plan the face learning some of the basic proportions and um, so they're not going to be the exact proportions you're going to need for everyone's face because the beauty is everyone is different and um, but these are some kind of little tips and tricks and um, to give you a rough guide to beginning okay all right and um, so what i'm going to show you is how to build up a basic framework which helps you kind of slot different features in to vaguely the right place that then you can adjust later with your observing skills when you're noticing little idiosyncrasies about people. So our first step is drawing a vague egg shape. So an egg shape is wider at the top, bit thinner at the bottom. And um, depending on people's head shapes, you'll either keep it that way or you won't. So there we go, there's mine. Once again, I'm drawing mine quite heavy so you guys can see it. Um, you can draw yours much, much lighter um, because you're going to be rubbing out a lot of this later when you're getting in more of your detail. This is kind of like an underdrawing we're going to be working on. We're going to be working a bit with fractions today, uh, but mo don't worry if you're getting any flashbacks to horrible maths classes. It's mostly just going to be d roughly dividing things in half. We don't need anything 100% mathematically on. We're just going to eyeball it. So now we've got our vague egg head shape. We're going to be doing a front on portrait. So I'm going to put a big line through the middle because that's where my nose is going to be and it's going to help me get my eyes in the right place. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line across the middle like that and that's going to be well mine's a bit mine's a bit low so i actually need to adjust it to about there so this is the way i like to measure it i'm not doing anything with a ruler just getting my fingers and checking both sides of the line are the same and that's going to be where my eyes are because if you look at my eyes here the distance well i've got quite a big chin so mine would be adjusted if I've got my eyes here, if I go like this, and then go like this, you're getting the top of my hair. Because if you just put your eyes kind of where you'd like to, which is maybe about, maybe a bit further up the face, what you'll end up with is no hair. You need room for getting in the hair or the scalp if you've got no hair, that sort of thing. We've already done our face into two halves and now what we're going to do is we're going to divide our bottom half in half making it into a quarter so of this section halfway down that is where our nose is roughly going to end so that's this bit this little bit here in between the nostrils roughly about half so that is a quarter of the face so you should have four of those in there wow my eyeballing is really off today mine should be about here a bit further down and that is nose so from the tip of the nose down to the chin we're going to divide in half again which is going to be an eighth of the face and that is the middle line for the mouth so it isn't this bit it isn't this bit it's a bit. The corners will be two. So that is one eighth, which is the mouth. But I find it easier just to do half, half, and half again. Okay. The next bit I think is the trickiest bit to do, uh, but once you get the hang of it, it's much, much easier so don't worry about getting it 100% right first time just give it a go so one of the most useful things that anyone ever taught me is 
one of your eyes is about a fifth of the width of your entire face. So I should be able to fit five eyes across my face. So I should be able to get five eyes across this length. And also that the space in between your eyes is the width of one eye. So that's very helpful. So you should be able to get in between your two eyes an eye, and then an eye here and an eye here. So what I tend to do is I tend to roughly guess about the width of an eye with an eye in between them and then generally I can kind of fit one on each side. So if you want to you can mathematically measure this out and divide it by 5 and then measure out say this was 20 it would be 4, 4, 4, 4 and 4 if that makes sense. Um, but I find it easier just to kind of go for a, a width then take that width and do it again, and again, and again. And just remember, near enough is good enough. It's not going to be exactly five the way across, it's just an average. So give that a go. Once you've done your working out your fifths across the way. I like to draw in a circle for the eye socket. So that's not the same as the eye and the eyeball. The eye socket is this entire bit. If you feel here, you can feel the top bone. And if you feel below your eye, you can feel the other bone in there. And that's what we're drawing. And I find this helps me get both the eyebrow and the cheek in the right place as well as placing the eye. So I find that this is a useful stage for me. I like to draw in the eye socket. Okay. So without with the risk of getting a bit dark, if imagine your skull. Your skull, you'd have this big space here and here. And you'd that's where your eyeball is sitting, because your eye your eye itself is a ball, it's circular. Um, so that needs to fit within your skull and is then covered with your eyelid, your upper and lower lid. So I find it can be quite helpful to think about that um, when I'm drawing. Once we've got our eye sockets in, we can then work out where the edges of our nose are going to be. Uh, because if you look, the edge of your nose, this little dimply bit, lines up with the inside corner of the eye. So I can bring this down and I know that's where the edge of my nose is going to be. I can bring this one down and I know that's where the edge of my nose is going to be. That's going to help me make sure I'm getting it in because noses are one of the trickiest things to draw because we know they're there and they're really big and real but if you're looking at a picture of someone there's you can only tell really by shading there's not any lines um, that we can really see. Um, okay. <laughs> Working out the corners of the mouth. So the corners of the mouth match up with, see the coloured bit of your eye when you're looking straight forward. So the coloured bit of your eye is called the iris. And if you go to the inside edge of the colour bit of your eye and draw a line directly down when you're looking straight ahead that is where the edge of your mouth is going to be. That's a really good thing to look at in the mirror and a lot of these proportion things can be quite good to try in the mirror to see how you would draw your face. Um, so when I'm at this stage which is the very skeleton looking a bit like a Cyberman stage um, I just kind of guesstimate where my irises are going to be to give myself a rough guide. I might change it a bit later, but that's okay. So I've just gone to the middle of my eye socket, drawn a rough circle, drawn a rough iris, and then taken that line down. That's going to be about there, and I'll take that line down. That's going to be about there. And that's where the edges of my mouth are going to be. And quite often, that is a dimple. So that doesn't mean that your lips are going to come out all big and thick to about there because it might look a bit off. People's lips kind of taper into a dimple. 
So this is going to be where our dimple is going to be for the edges of the mouth. Alright, so now we're going to start looking at the top portion of our face. So, looking at this top half here, okay, we're going to do in half and then we're going to put a middle line in both those halves. So we're doing this bit into quarters. Okay, so I've got half, so I've got one, two, three, four, all the same. Okay, so your first mark, and draw a nice line along here. That's going to be eyebrows. And the top one here, that's going to be roughly where your hairline is. So we've got a quarter, eyebrows, another quarter, nothing, another quarter, hairline, and then the top of the head. Our next section is working out where our ears are. So generally, our ears go start at our eyebrows, top of the eyebrows, and the end of the tip of the nose. Boop, boop. So we want to mark in eyebrows there, bottom of those there. So it's gonna the top of them is at the eyebrows. So it's not like it's starting all the way up here. They're starting maybe in line with the eye, so maybe doing eye up and tapering off down to the nose like that. And you're not always going to be able to see people's ears, but it's just worth knowing where they are. Okay, so top of the ear with the eyebrow, bottom of the ear with the bottom of the nose. To be working in the neck. So the neck is mostly made of quite two big muscles like this, these ones here, and they start here and come down and join your collarbone. So they're starting underneath both your ears, they come down and cross over and join your collarbone. So I find that's quite a good way to work out that I'm getting the neck in the right place. So I start at the ear, draw a sweeping line coming down, then the other ear, sweeping line coming down and then from there I take from the edges of that where it's leaving the face I draw a sweeping line curving down and that makes sure that I've got a neck that looks like it can hold up a face so otherwise you can end up with these really thin little necks and it looks like the head's going to fall off it's not a good look so we've got the neck kind of slightly tapering out as it comes down and I've got these muscles in mind because they've got to hold up the biggest bit of your body. Alright, so this is our terrifying scaffolding and um, what we're going to do next is we're going to rub out all the lines that we don't really need just now and I'll show you how to start slotting in facial features. So here is my picture where I've rubbed out a lot of the lines that I'm not going to need anymore at the moment. And the first thing we're going to look at is getting the face more um, a shape of whoever we want to draw. Um, because not everyone has a weird egg shaped face like this. Um, so if you google drawing face shapes you'll get Lots of different charts coming up that um, kind of make everyone's face like circular, round, triangle, square. Um, and although these, these can be helpful, um, it can be a lot easier just to look really at the thing in front of you. Um, because we don't, we don't all have faces that fit into these certain categories, we all have our own faces. Um, so what I like to do is I like to look at the ratios um, in between the different features. So how big is the chin compared to the forehead? How wide are the cheekbones compared to the chin? And through that we can put together our own face shapes. Um, but to give you a wee 
example of the type of thing you want to be looking for just so you can spot differences between different faces. Here's a chart I've drawn of some face shapes that exist. Um, they're very generic and they're quite rough but it gives you a kind of idea about looking at the way different people's faces are constructed. So it can be useful to have a wee look at um, people on the internet and kind of have a look at what kind of face shape they might have, um, noticing different widths of cheekbones, where people's eyes are, how big their forehead is, that sort of thing. Um, so today we're going to look at um, getting chins right, getting cheekbones in and generally adjusting our bog standard egg shape for the person you're drawing. So I'm going to be drawing Issa Rae again just to keep it consistent throughout. So just to remind you, here's what she looks like. Alright, we have a slight change of location and outfit because it is now after lunch. I've just eaten lots of carrots and some really garlicky hummus. Um, okay, so we're going to start looking at how to adapt this egg shape for the specific face that you are doing. So, I like to start by doing the area beside the temples and the cheekbones and just by adjusting where that is on each person. So, if looking at my lovely Isa, she's got very high cheekbones that are coming in and down towards her nose. So I draw the kind of the shape beside the temple. Temple and temple, she's got quite narrow temples. And then I like to draw in the line and then around the cheekbones. Her cheekbones are coming down like this. Lovely. Um, I think I draw like this because this is the way that uh, my teacher painted when I was in secondary school. It was very like going round all the different crevices of the body. So obviously you're going to be drawing this much lighter than me. It's going to look quite strange because I'm drawing really heavy but it's just so it's showing up for you. So they're coming in and round and down towards her nose. Okay. Let's have a wee bit of a think about cheekbones because not everyone's cheekbones are super obvious and chiselled. I find it's quite easy to like feel where they are in your own face. So mine are quite flat. They're kind of here. But some people have like really jutting ones because they're really chiselled. Um, some people have nice smiley 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 cheekbones. Some people have really broad cheekbones. And um, so just looking about where they're coming, where they are in relation to the eyes, I find is a really, really good way to do it. Um, and it kind of looks at what angle the face is going. So there's mine kind of kind of there. So have a wee, wee feel of your face to kind of understand where your, where your skull is. The next bit I like to do is brow bones. So that's where your eyebrows are. Um, you might like to do this in a slightly different order, but this is how I really like to start the face. And um, so again, have a feel where your own is. Feel that bit of your kind of your Neanderthal ridge in your face. Um, so if I'm looking at Issa, um, she's got nice curvy um, brow bones in. So we're not drawing the eyebrow, but the eyebrow will kind of guide you as to where it is. So when I'm drawing in mine, I like to start in here, kind of doing the bits of the bone that are on either side, just underneath the top of the eyebrows. And I find this really helps me get the shape of the face and the expression. And we'll guide some of your, your shading later on. That's the bit that I like to do. Next, help it kind of build in a bit of the structure of the face. Mine have gone out a bit too wide there. Help that out. Okay, so that's step number two for me. So I just um, pressed the wrong button and didn't film me drawing this bit, but um, we were doing the forehead and the head shape. So, what I've done is I've just looked at where her hairline is, drawn that in, and then Issa doesn't have, her hair is mostly up, styled on top, so it's not like all waving around her face, which makes it a bit easier. A bit like mine. So if I was doing my head, I would be drawing my hairline, 
and then I'll be drawing the outline of my hair. So that's what I've done here. I've drawn hairline and outline of hair. So what I've done is, because Issa's head isn't an egg, it's a bit narrower and a bit squarer and flatter on the top. Um, so I'll give you a demonstration if I was going to do my hair. I've got quite a, oh, quite a square forehead and then I've got kind of wispy bits. Bits coming down here. And then my hair kind of comes out like an onion, like that. So we're kind of keeping it as vague as that. Can I say? So here we are, I've got a bit of her hair sketched in, I've got her head and a tiny bit of her hairline in. So remember you're keeping it quite rough so we're getting the general shape where you're being more specific than just drawing a big a big eggy shape but we're not looking for pristine detail right now. Near enough is good enough. Next section is getting in the lower cheek section and making sure we're getting the bottom of the face sort of right. So got cheekbones so our cheekbones are up here and then we've got the jawbone that's like locking in so we got this bit kind of separate from the bones in this bit of the face so we're going to draw this jawbone in so it's kind of coming from underneath the cheekbones so if you're going to do me i've got almost an egg shape it's quite round whereas um the lovely isa has got a bit more of a square jaw it's not like square square but it's got a bit more like douche douche to it that is a technical term by the way and um, so just gonna roughly sketch it in and i'm gonna just enhancing on the egg that i have drawn so my chin's gonna still be around about here but i'm just giving it a bit more form you know a bit more individuality so i've started with it a bit square and then i'm just gonna round it in a bit it's okay if this takes you a few goals to get right that's that's life isn't it okay and then personally what I like to do is I like to draw a circle for where the chin is because I find this helps me get the shading right, right later. So I'd be popping in a bit of a circle here just to remind me that's where I'm ultimately heading. Cool. One of the next bits I like to do isn't super obvious on the photograph that I'm working from but I find that it's quite easy to find in your face and it's kind of the lines around your mouth so it's kind of these ones here where like when you, smi when you smile you get the the crunch bits there and that's kind of underneath your big I don't know what this bit is in your cheek but it helps give your face shape okay. so I'd advise trying to find that in your picture um, and if you can see it that's great because it helps give it a bit more expression and this is when it's really helpful not to have a picture that's super airbrushed because that's this bit and this bit are often bits that are missed out in those photographs so I'm just going to put in those little bits here for Issa because she's a smiley lady so she's done lots of smiling and it helps give her face some shape so it might be that these pit, these lines aren't in our finished picture, but they'll help us work out where everything's going. And gives a bit more, you can see, you can kind of see the shape of the cheek by popping those in. Um, and if you can see the person, so I, if I do this, you can see mine there. Um, and if you can see those on your picture, that also helps you shape the chin a little bit. Some other face lines are quite useful or if there's any kind of lines underneath the eye and um, kind of on the bottom of the eye socket so it might be coming from along here and that similarly gives your um, face a bit of shape because you can kind of see where the top of the cheeks is. So you don't have to put those in but I find that they help me. Okay, 
so that's as far as we're going to go with this drawing today and um, over the next few weeks we'll be looking at how to do the facial features proper and that's when you'll be able to build on this framework a little bit more if you want to see how to progress from here tune in over the next few weeks when we're going to be doing one video a week explaining different elements of portraiture if you can't wait for that feel free to bash on and just see what you do and then you can see how much you've progressed as you're trying the next steps and um, feel free to try different people each week as well because the more people you draw the more you'll learn so i'm going to leave it here today but that doesn't mean that you have to all right so today's joke is why did the Clydesdale horse give the pony a glass of water? Because he was a little horse. I didn't get quite the intonation right. What was it? Because he was a little horse. I don't know if that worked. <laughs> Give it a go. Okay, I uh, hope you all have a, a lovely day. Stay safe. Enjoy the sun if you can. 